why does this happen? What's happening in the muscles? And essentially our nerves just get to this hyper excitable state where any little thing can set them off. Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about cramping, specifically more like leg cramping because that's more typically where it happens, right? So why does it happen? What are some common causes and what can we really do to help essentially prevent cramping? As always, if this is something that you've experienced before, please comment below because it helps other people to hear other people who are going through the similar things or what you've done to kind of help with your cramping. Maybe we'll talk through it. Maybe you have something new to add to the conversation. So comment below. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Hit that bell for reminders and you'll get notified anytime we come up with either these PT pearls and common topics or just questions and answers about your body. So cramping, I think cramping is something that so many people deal with. We're talking about those muscle cramps, like a leg cramp. If it's been a hot day and you moved the day previous or you've been doing a lot of exercise, sometimes our hamstrings will cramp up on us. Sometimes our calves will cramp up on us. Sometimes people t talk about waking up in the middle of the night with just like an excruciating calf cramp. Yeah. And it, it's kind of scary because we really don't know what causes these. And everyone's asking like, why am I getting cramping? Why am I getting cramping? What can I do about it? So let's talk into that a little bit. Yeah. And specifically, we want to talk about more like prevention methods. Yes, we'll talk about what you can do when you feel the cramps coming on. But ultimately, if this is something that you deal with and you don't want to deal with anymore, let's talk about what you can do to help prevent them in the future. And it tends to be shorter duration. I mean, some people will have a cramp that lasts for a minute or more, but it's not like a back spasm or something like that that might have lasting or enduring pain beyond that. So localized, short term. So now we want to talk about like, why does this happen? What's happening in the muscles? And essentially our nerves just get to this hyper excitable state where any little thing can set them off. I know often if I've experienced hamstring cramps, it's when I am doing some sort of hamstring movement or stretching my hamstring and then I move out of it and all of a sudden the hamstring wants to cramp on me. And and so why is it causing that? Why is something like a regular stretch or a regular contraction causing my hamstring to want to contract so hard? The cause ultimately is unknown, right? It's idiopathic and we can't exactly say, but we can put some factors associated that typically happen when cramping happens. And we know also that cramping isn't just due to that local thing that's happening within the muscle, but it's really like a whole body system. Yeah. And it could be anything that's happening within our environment, our emotional environment inside internally. So we really have to take a look at like the whole picture, not just the muscle and what is this muscle doing and why yeah. is this muscle doing this, but really taking a look at what are other factors associated around our environment or within our internal body contributing to what What's happening when we feel this muscle cramping. Yeah, so things that we found when we looked into the research a little bit that might be associated with muscle cramping can be exercise and yeah. do so if you've done certain exercises, if you do a heavy leg lift or something, the, the excitability, the inflammation, everything that is happening more locally in those muscles can impact how our legs might cramp or might not cramp later on. Heat induced environments or heavy heat environments. So if it's just hot out, if it's humid, if we have large losses of sweat, so kind of to go along with that high heat environment, if we lose a lot of sweat, that generally means we're also losing a lot of electrolytes, which are the really important materials that our muscles use to help with smooth and voluntary muscle contractions. Exactly. So we don't get into that involuntary muscle contraction. I feel like we could bring this up right now. I mean, we've talked about electrolytes. We've talked about things that kind of help what we do on a regular basis yeah. for our own bodies because we're not taking in processed foods all the time. We're not going and getting a bunch of sodium from which usually does come from processed foods, right? So we're gonna need to replenish our bodies, especially because we like to move, we like to sweat, and right now it's summer. <laughs> so that yeah. just all compiles on top of each other. And we do take Element. We have Element actually in our waters sitting in this room right now as we're recording this podcast. Great to replenish those electrolytes <laughs> between podcasts, especially because I sweat during podcasts because we <laughs> turn the air off. But yeah, Element, it's got yeah. sodium, it's got magnesium, it's got potassium. I, th I think there's this old adage of how to prevent muscle cramps it's like eat a banana eat a banana yeah, a day right. and it'll help you get your potassium and element has that built right in and yeah. so you get all these electrolytes especially for people who sweat a lot who are moving a lot or if you might experience muscle cramps element is something that can be very supportive to your system to make sure that 
those muscles, your body, your nervous system has the right electrolytes, sodium, magnesium, potassium are involved in so many different cellular processes that are involved in our nervous system and our muscular system. So making sure that your body is fully replenished of those electrolytes. Go check out the link down in the show notes. It's just drink element, element, just letters, L M N T drink element.com backslash optimal. And with every single order, you get a free sample pack so that you can try a bunch of different flavors, but go check them out. It's one of our favorite ways to make sure that we're staying hydrated and keeping our body replenished of those fluids. A lot of times what's happening or some predisposing factors that happen when we're talking about muscle cramping is that we're having this electrolyte imbalance. And what happens is that we get this change in volume or this electrolyte concentration of the extracellular fluid, I'm just gonna go into the whole thing, around the epineuron or the end plates during this muscle shortening. So especially when we're contracting. Well, yeah, and during the contraction period, like when you're coming out of a stretch, your yeah. muscle shortening, yes. and that's when it might start to grab at you. There are so many things that can cause hyper excitability in our nervous system, whether we're talking lack of sleep, whether we're talking hormonal imbalances, emotional disturbances. There's a lot of association with people who may have some sort of depressive or anxiety disorders mm -hmm. and different muscle cramps. So anything that can kind of elevate the excitability of that nervous system might have an impact on how often we feel muscle cramps. Even compression of nerve roots. So if say we're, we're in a stagnant position, which a lot of us are all throughout the day, not moving enough, not getting enough fluid to move between our fascia and, and compressing down on certain tissues. Well, if we're not moving enough, we're not stretching enough throughout the day, we're going to be impacting the signals that we're putting on our body. And so that alone could even start to cause or be a predisposing factor, right, to maybe having more muscle cramping happening in your life. And then another one is any sort of consistent use of drugs that are going to impact our nervous system like statins, beta blockers, which different people will be taking for heart related or lung related issues, even things like nicotine, because that has a huge impact on our nervous system. Diuretics. So those diuretics, because that's going to have passing a lot of fluids through our system if you're using diuretics. So you're going to be wanting to make sure you're consuming a lot of fluids to kind of offset that. So anything that is consistently impacting our nervous system drug wise can also have kind of that predisposing factor. About 6% of the American population have nocturnal cramping. And to me, that still sounds like a lot of people. Yeah, I've had have you gotten calf cramps at night? No. You've never gotten a calf cramp no. at night? I always used to get them. And I think that was more sport and activity related for me after like a heavy day of leg lifting, especially because everyone I think goes through a little calf phase in the gym. Yeah. So you're doing a lot of calf raises and then yeah. you go out and do sprints with the track team or whatever it might be. And then that night you notice, man, I may not have down regulated or loosened up all the tension I put through those calves. And then it comes back with a vengeance in the middle yeah. of the night. A lot of people with that nocturnal cramping, you know, more associated with heart related issues that you might be having mm. or depression. Like you said, depression can just help excite that internal system that we're having that nervous system. So anything that's heightening and causing that excitability can be contributing to those muscle cramping. Okay. So what do we do? <laughs> you know, yeah. how can we either prevent muscle cramping from happening? Or if you're somebody that experiences this regularly, what can you start introducing that might help anything that is going to help down regulate that system? And so if we are talking locally and you're experiencing this a lot in your calves or your hamstrings or your quads on the front of your thighs, how can we insert some relaxing mobility work with some good breath work that's going to help down regulate systemically with some good breath work and mm -hmm. some good mobility, but also locally working on those muscle groups to just kind of try and relax and downregulate the input that's going into those nerves. I can remember if a an athlete got a lot of cramping, what I would see is a coach then coming over and doing a really aggressive hamstring kind of nerve stretch. And it was almost like that person was cringing even more because now you're not just downregulating stretching, but you're really doing an aggressive stretch and I think yes we want to stretch <laughs> that's mm -hmm. going to help but we have to do it in a way that's going to down regulate the system and not cause us to fight the the stretch or fight the impact the response that we're putting in the body making sure you're getting in electrolytes carbs can really be beneficial because carbs tend to turn into 
glucose in our bloodstream and our muscles run off this thing called glycogen, which is like what glucose turns into when it goes into our bloodstream. So our blood glucose converts to glycogen. And if our muscles don't have enough of that available, that might be something that contributes to this spontaneous contraction. Eating a banana before you're going, you know, a couple hours before you're going to get some of that movement in that you might normally cramp during, making sure that you're getting an adequate amount of carbohydrates for your system to be able to replenish after you do a lot of that work. And just adequate hydration on a day-to-day -day basis. Are we actually getting the adequate sleep that's necessary in order to replenish our body's needs so mm -hmm. it can fuel and work the way that it's supposed to? And just with hydration as well. And then we have to remember as we're going into exercise, not just jumping into exercise. And yeah. this is is particularly like people like to think of weekend warriors who work a lot of the day they're sitting sedentary and then you go and you do your hard workout right are you warming up properly are you starting to introduce the heat that's going to be built into your body as you continue into that exercise so i think those are really important aspects to continue to remember and put into your life that doesn't have to be very hard but can be really yeah. impactful and preventing this cramping down the road. Yeah, the warm-ups and the cool-downs mm -hmm. becoming so important, especially, like you said, for somebody who might be sitting around doing work and not moving a lot throughout the day and then suddenly jumping in. And then finally, you know, we mentioned a lot about stress or anxiety or emotional things that may be going on in life. Like, how can you start to find the things that help you navigate that, whether that's yeah. seeing someone in person, talking to somebody about that, finding a journaling, meditative, breath practice that's going to help support you in those areas. So important. That's yeah. going to just, again, help contribute to that down regulation of the system so that our nerves aren't so active in talking to our muscles when we don't want them to. Thanks for joining us for another PT Pearl on leg cramping. Did you like what we talked about? Do you have any other questions, any other suggestions that you want to share with the audience? Because when we pool our resources and suggestions, that's when we really get down to the root cause for everybody please share this out to anybody who you think might value from it click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always be up to date on the most recent podcasts we come out with and other videos that jen comes out with on specific movement and pain points and of course we'll see you next time on the optimal body podcast